Next is the terminology uh, common for flower. So flower is a highly modified shoot bearing uh, specialized uh, floral leaves. So okay, let's continue our discussion of reproductive uh, terminology where we are going to do a quick review of the flower. And remember the uh, flower is the reproductive part of the plant and it's a modified shoot basically. It's, it is a determinant in that it ceases growth so it does not grow uh, indefinitely. It grows through a certain number of nodes and internodes. Uh, those are the sepal sepals and the petals, the androsium. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, sepal and pet. Uh, so this is a uh, the andros the androsium. And uh, the the endogenism, and then it stops growing. So it stops growing after, right after producing the reproductive parts. So just uh, okay, the stamen, uh, which are the male parts. So this uh, is the male parts, and the couples, uh, which are the female part. Okay. As I've already said, that uh, they can have those outer modified leaves around it, which are the sepals and the petals, and those are called perianth. So we've already seen those parts of the flower. Here we'll just uh, label them again really quickly. This is a perianth, sepal, a sepal, a petal, the perianth. We had the receptacle at the back, at the base. So here's this. Uh, so here's sepal, petal, and receptacle, and those are the perianth, okay, which means around the flower. And then we have the male parts next, uh, and we have two parts of the male parts. We have the anther, and also we have the filament. All together, all together, we uh, this become the stamen, okay. And then if you look at the name for all the stamen together, we usually say it's the house. Of the men, so the androsium, andros, the androsium, andros means men, sium means house, so androsium is a man, uh, man's house. Okay, on the female side we have the house of the female, the gynosium. So this is a gynosium, gyno means female, asium means house, and there is those three parts of uh, to it: the stigma, style, and ovary. Stigma, which means the spot, okay, inside the ovary. So in, inside the ovary, we have the ovules. So and we know that the ovary is going to become the fruit, and the ovules are going to become the seeds. So those are the main parts of the flower. Let's go and look at some of the other terminologies that are associated with flowers. Uh, these two first uh, diagrams, I think uh, you just know the terminologies. Uh, uh, have a, you can have a little stock under the flower or whether they don't they have a stock. Or they so it's just a pedicalate, you have the stock. If it's a sessil, you have no stock. Okay. Uh, for flower, uh, composition can be complete, uh, that is, all the parts are present or it can be incomplete. So, either they have, uh, have uh, composition have complete or incomplete, uh, would be the, uh, would be the sepals and, or the petals absence. Uh, so, these terms complete versus incomplete are referring to the perians, okay? Uh, the terms on the other side, on the left side, okay, uh, are going to refer to the sexuality, the flower, the sex flower, the flower of the sex, the sex of the flower, sorry, the sexuality of the flowers. And the flower we drew in the, the last slide uh, was a flower that has, uh, that had both male and female uh, on the same flower. So we say that's a perfect flower, okay, or a bisexual flower. Now we can also have a uni. So uni mean uh, one. So sexual flowers, unisexual flowers, and those uh, can be if they have only stamens, we call it as a staminate. Okay, only the male side. And if they are on the female side, there's that the term pistil again. We say 
that they are pistillate. Okay. So now uh, we have the we have the how the flowers are arranged. So they are either perfect, staminate, or pistillate. However, we can also talk about the sex of the plant, not just the sex of the flowers. So these flowers can be arranged onto the plant in different ways. If we have bisexual flowers, okay, it's a plant sex. We have bisexual flowers. We say that the plant is sinaceous. So if the flowers are unisexual, there's two possibilities now. They can be monoecious, where on the same plant, what they mean by on the same plant here is the male and female are on the same plant, one plant, two different sexes of flowers. Or we can have dioecious, which means two houses. So in this case, the male and the female are on different plants. So the difference here is monoecious. We have unisexual flowers, but they are on the same plant. Dioecious, uh, unisexual flowers, uh, but they are on different plants. The symmetry of the flowers, we have lots of different symmetries. We have common one in uh, is this one, which is called uh, radial uh, or actinomorphic. Okay, radial or actinomorphic, and in in uh, and in that case we have multiple planes of symmetry that are shown here. There can be more than three planes of symmetry. In, in this case, you have one symmetry, two symmetry, uh, two symmetry, and three symmetry. Okay, this is a radial. If you have two planes of symmetry, uh, symmetry because it's a bi, okay, bi radial, okay. Bi means two, so and two radia, so that a uh, bi radial flower has two planes of symmetry like this. So we have one and two, so we have bi radial. Uh, a bilateral, a bilateral flower, okay, a bilateral flower or zygomorphic here is also called has one plane of symmetry, okay. So there's uh, a, a mirror imaging, uh, mirror images on both halves of the flower. And an asymmetric flower is no plane of symmetry. There's no symmetry on on that uh, on that flower. The number of hole uh, within a perianth can vary. Okay, but I, I don't want to stress about this so much. You'll see some of these things in the textbook when we talk about different groups of plants. The most important thing on this slide are the two prefixes, the the the, the prefix apo and the prefix sin. Okay. Now sin, so S Y N, okay. Uh, I think we have already done it. Means a uh, with or together, uh, and it's indicating that there is a fusion. So we talk about perianth fusion right now here. There is a fusion. So in, in this context of talking about perianth fusion, sin means fused. So if we said that something was sin sepalous. Sincipalus here, okay, that means fused sepals. We have a means of fused sepals. Sympetalus, sympetalus here, that means uh, the difference is the same, is the same, uh, is the same, they are just a difference in Greek, okay. Okay, sympetalus is the same, uh, fused petals. Apo. Apo means off or away from, and it's this in, in it's this context that means not fused or free. So something which is aposipless, aposipless could would have free petals. And you can figure out all the other terms here and all these uh, other floral forms uh, if you just know those two roots and those uh, uh, the two roots about apple and sin will occur in other kinds of contexts also, especially the words this sim or sin or apple. Okay. Androsium. So stamens representing the androsium present a more complicated architecture as compared to sepals and petals. Each stamen has an anther. Okay. So this has an anther. Typically tetraspongiate, which uh, with 
to enter sex with sex which was microsporangia in each of the two uh, another lobes carried carry on a filament it's on the filament so in the endosium we already know there's a filament uh, and an enter and together those form a stamen so it's enter and also filament okay uh, there are sometimes other structures sometimes the filament can be either kinds of shapes here as a lamina body okay so a petal like uh, and sometimes the whole enter can be sterilized uh, in the in the place of a stamen so you can have this kind of structure also uh, there's another term here a tiki what is a tiki a tiki here it means uh, a singular is teka as uh, plural is a tiki and it means like a space or a cell okay so there are essentially two tiki here which is two areas where the pollen is going to be so the tiki are the place are the places where the pollen is born in the enter a uh, stamen arrangement what's important on this again the prefixes and the suffixes suffixes and if you know those you can make this uh, try to make sense of these things okay so di means two tetra means four dynamo means power or big or largeness so essentially what it's saying di di dynamus means di dynamus uh, here means two big ones so if you look at here we see that there are two big stamens two big stamens uh, te tetra uh, dynamus four big ones and we can we can see here there's a four uh, uh, we uh, four big or larger stamens didymus it means that they are in the clusters okay enter attachment uh, varies across the angiosperm we can look at here here are how the enter attach to the to the to the to the to the, to the filament so it can be basifix dorsifix sub sub basifix and also can can have a versatile where you have dorsifix or basifix it depends on the uh, how how it attach so next gynesium uh, the female part of the flower and we can look at the different ways that gynesium is oriented or arranged uh, it's a little uh, it's a little it's a little more complex even than what's going on the male side if we see the cross section through the di di uh, gy gynesium here okay we can see with uh, three couples and then we look here excuse me and then we look here we see that here are the three couples in the cross uh, section uh, now also notice that uh, when we say there are three couples three couples there are three of other things here okay when we talk about our first we talk about our locals loc sorry locules okay and the locule means small space there are three small spaces we can see this all this is a, is a, 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 a locule okay uh, so there are three small spaces we can see here so there are three small enclosed spaces down here it says uh, three lock uh, three couples down here it says uh, there are locules one locule one per couple okay locule is one per couple so every couple there has one locule so so that if they have three couples which means that one one locule per couple we have three locules this is a situation where we have uh apocarpus apocarpus gynesium so the couples are unfused okay so here it is a three couples and we want to know the number of pistils okay number of pistils in this case because you will often see that in keys when there's uh, three unfused carpels we have three pistils okay syncarpus syncarpus ovaries so syncarpus so we have three unfused carpels we have three pistils here the syncarpus here syncarpus ovaries means seen uh, when we have fused couples apocarpus 
uh, free couple sing couples is sing uh, is fused couples so we have we can have different numbers of locules now uh, so here in the first case we have three couples and one locule so how do we know that there are three couples here one uh, we can count the number of styles so we have a uh, three styles here so which means we have three styles which means that we have three couples two we can count the number of placenta you have the uh, one placenta two three so they have three placenta uh, the attachment places of the ovule so here are three placentas three placenta and then if we look for the locules there is one locule here it's only one locule here so in this case our three couples are fused together uh, leaving only one small space in the center so let's look over at the other side of the diagram at the far right okay sorry look over here immediately looking at the cross section you look at the cross section here we see that there are four locules one two three four there's a four locules here uh four small spaces and we can see that there are four placentas one two two three four so four placenta four places where the ovules are attached so and so that also tells us there are four couples so there are four couples from the outside we don't see any of that we just see a single genesium so this we can see oh only one single genesium but if we do the cross section here you can see this and then we can say that oh they have a uh, four couples and four locus so this is a uh, syncarpus so maybe uh, okay in cases like this we have to look on the inside where i've got cut a section and look on uh, this uh, the inside to see what was in there the third example the third is a little bit even more confusing i'm sorry they don't even show you the cross section uh here uh, this is uh, this is just a longitudinal the longitudinal uh, section but we can say how do uh, how do we know there's two couples here and again we look up here and see and the number of styles so we have two styles so when we see that there are two styles and we can conclude that there is two couples in there okay so in this case there's only one locule only one locule uh uh, and so you don't see the in this one even even the placentas so it doesn't show you that in that in that uh, cross section so when 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 we want to determine the couple number also we already seen this already that uh, in cases like this where we have three couples okay uh, of course we look at the three styles we can count the number of styles here are three styles so if you don't if you got three styles you have pretty much guaranteed you are going to have three couples on the inside even though they don't they didn't they, uh, they didn't they they don't show you okay okay in this case uh, like this you can you can't tell for sure uh, suspect that there's one couple because there is one style you have to verify that with a cross section so you you cut uh, a cross section and you find one locule and that tells you that you were right there's a single couple there one placenta two this one placenta and one locule so this is will be one couple then you can look at here we have a case where again we have got fused couples and we are looking at the number of locules uh, to tell us how many couples they are so we are cutting again we are cutting the cross section uh, two locules uh, two couples uh, five five lo uh, five lo locules five couples in this case same thing with placenta there you, you could count the number of placenta is one two three four five so five couples which is a uh, five locules which means that the five uh, couples they say one and two that's a two locules so this uh, the, the placenta is here so this is a placenta, 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 placenta. Okay. So if the if there is only one locule, uh, we got we go back to our uh, criterion of looking at the placenta. So here here is here uh, here is a situation where you suspect there is two couples here because uh, although there is not 
two completely closed locules, there is two almost closed locules, but there are two placenta. Next case over here, we have three placenta. One, two, three. So they have, uh, although they, uh, so here you have two placenta. This one have one, one, two, three placenta. Uh, and even though there is uh, only one locule, only one locule, but they, of course they have three placenta, or this which means that it's one locule, but they have three couples or three placenta. Over here we find one uh, only one placenta. Okay, it is a really weird one because it appears to be at the top, uh, and so we would set one couple. Okay. Uh, and we also see one style stigma, uh, style stigma combination here. So that would be concluding that there is only one couple there. So now the, this third case over here is the hardest one. And uh, sometimes you have to do more detailed studies to really tell this one. Okay. Okay, the attachment. The attachment uh, of the ovules. How are, they, how are the ovules? Ovules attached in placentation, uh, placentation. The most common one is axil. Uh, there's the axis. It says uh, column here. Okay. It says column here, but basically it's uh, generally it's called uh, axis. Uh, so there's a central axis and the ovules uh, attached, uh, uh, attached there. There's a lot of variations of marginal. Okay, there's a lot of um, uh, marginal. I think the easiest one is up here, if you can see, uh, where we see the ovules are uh, attached out here at the margin. Okay, attached here at the margins. And then the, there's a variation on that. Okay, a free central. So free central is one here. You can see that the that the there is an axis on the center. There is an axis on the center but it's not attached to any of the sides okay so in axial placentation over here the axis uh, the axis is attached to the side of the ovary however in free central here the axis is not attached uh, to the sides of the ovary so this axial my axial marginal and free central are the most common ones the rest are much less uh, common this one Okay, the next the arrangement of the flower parts. Uh, this is a relationship to the ovary. So the first characteristics here that we can look at is the position of the ovary. So this is the ovary. This is the ovary inside here. Is the ovary? This is the ovary. This is the ovary. Okay, the superior ovary. The the superior ovary. You can see that the ovary is attached above the flower parts so these are the flower parts above the flower parts so all the i put in the green all the flower, flower parts so over here ovary inferior okay the ovary is attached below the flower parts so flower parts come off above it so ovary below is the inferior ovary so those are the two basic in ovary positions superior or inferior now we want to look at these other terms. Uh, these terms refer to the flower parts in relationship to the ovary. So what do I mean by the hypo here? Hypo means uh, uh, oh sorry, hypo means below, and anginous, you know, is a female. So hypogynous is below the female. Okay. So we uh, we can see that the flower parts here uh, come off below the female okay so below the female the flower parts is below the female uh, the female if you look over here is uh, ep epigenous epi means above okay epi means above genus uh, uh, genus means female so epigenous means means that above the female here the flower parts they are becoming free above the ovary so the epigenous ovary is the epigenous flower rather the epigenous flower has an inferior ovary the hypogenous flower has a superior ovary that leaves us with these two weird over here 
uh, we are just not going uh, to worry uh, about it too much. We've seen that the ovary is inferior, but uh, that's all we need to do. So this case is peri, uh, peri, perigenous. Peri means around. Okay, peri means around. And genus means female, so around the female. And if you look at the position of the flower parts, we see that they are born part way up the ovary. Now, they are not fused to the ovary. The ovary is still superior, but the flower parts are not. Okay? The, the flower parts are not free. They don't become free from each other below the ovary. Too. So, they don't become free because there is this new structure, what we call as a hypentium. Okay? This a new structure, become a hypentium. Okay, uh, so there is a there is tissue here. So there is that structure of the flower that is the hypentium, a floral tissue that occurs below the flower but does not divide into parts. So let's just look at the like, like a picture. I, can, I hope I can explain this in more, more detail. Okay, there are sepals and also there are petals here and also the stamens up here and the gynesium, uh, the female part of the flower okay but those all become uh, become free well except the genesium uh, which is a uh, superior so, so this is a superior ovary because it's above right uh, and those other flower parts become free okay uh, kind of around the gymnasium <laughs> gynesium you can not dig around the gymnasium sorry gynesium Okay, and so we have this tissue here. This is what we call as hypentium. Okay, the hypentium. Look, hope it makes a little bit more sense. Now you can see it. Floral diagrams, you are not going to work with uh, this too much. You can refer to the textbook. Feel free to ask if you have questions. But again, the calyx and the corolla uh, uh, arrangement is a unique feature for the flowers, and especially for the identification. Uh, you may uh, uh, familiar with uh, what we call as a Fibonacci arrangement. This is a part of how uh, in the flowers, uh, in the roses, for instance. Again, uh, it's it's uh, it's a lengthy discussion about it. As there is there is of some formula you can refer to the textbook and feel free if you have questions. So of course these are just the di diagrammatic ways. Okay, the the floral arrangement. Basically, they just give you uh, this uh, diagrammatic ways of showing the different parts of the flower and the fusion fusion parts of the flower. Okay, uh, that's all about the flowers. Flowers, smile and stay pretty. Cheers.